Hello, welcome to the B. Moulton Foster Show. How do you spell success? Well, a diagnosed brain damaged person who beats all the odds and become a success and also a role model father. My guest today is, is Mr. William Dale and he's better known to many in this area, the Indianapolis area, as William Telfair and his son, Jamar, and Jamar is only four years old. He's a former Central State mental patient who has kept all of the past hidden for 20 years until today. And he's coming out to share his story so that it can inspire someone else. Mr. William Telfair was admitted to Central State Hospital in 1964 and his problems were diagnosed as follows. One, he was diagnosed as a chronic mental illness person, long standing. Two, a functioning psychotic level person, which is a mental disease. Three, mild brain organic, which means that he had an organ in his body, which is the brain that was not functioning properly, that a portion of the brain cell did not operate the way it was supposed to be. Number four, extremely weak impulse, forced to act suddenly at a thrust or push. Number five, schizoid, a mental disorder, which is a splitting personality. Six, aggressive, tending to attack or be hostile. Seven, passive, act upon someone, okay? Number eight, assaultive, offensive, violent, touching of another. All of those things, you're supposed to be out of it. Yeah, eight yeah. different things that were all negative about you. Yes. Now you do admit that you do have brain damage and you didn't know that for many, many years. You were born brain damaged. Yes. Uh, so what does that mean? What can you not do as a result of having a brain damage? Well, I have a hard time learning to read, but okay. I've, uh, I've, I've learned how to read newspapers and basically what any common person can, but yeah. uh, going up in school levels, I wasn't able to go because of my problem. I couldn't learn it. Now you were told that you could not be a good father, not in having a portion of your brain not functioning, that you could not be a father. But you have a success story here. Your son is age four. His name is Jamal. Yeah. You have taught this small child how to do a lot of things. Yeah, I've, all my jobs have to deal with children, so they've, they've helped me survive. They, after walking around feeling like a nobody, they, they make me feel like somebody, all children. Okay, why don't you talk to your son for a few moments and why don't you demonstrate for all of us what you have taught him and just some of the things that he knows. Most four-year-olders do not know some of the things, just some of the things that your son knows already. Uh -huh. Okay, why don't you ask him uh, a few questions? What's your name, Jamar? Jamar. What's your last name? Barnemi. Spell Jamar for me. J E M A L R. Spell Bellamy for me. B E L E A M Y. Um, what city are you from? Indiana. What state are you from? Indiana. Um, how many days of the week? Seven. Name the days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, what are you supposed to do when someone knocks on the door at home? Go get daddy or mama. Uh, if you open the door for a stranger, what's going to happen to you? I'm going to get a punishment. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so, how, okay, what else? Well, uh, I got blocks that we describe. He can describe all his ABCs. Say ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F. C H I C K F M N O B Q R S T 
U V W S Y C. That's good. <laughs> now, did you make your son one of your main goals in life? Did you want to prove the authorities wrong when they said that because you had brain damage that you couldn't teach your son how to do all of these things and that your son, in fact, would not be capable of learning. Was that the force behind you or the drive that you had within you to really make this young kid learn things? Well, I, I knew that I could work with kids real good because I've taught him everything he knows. He knows all his colors and stuff. I taught him because uh, I never had a kid around me to teach this little. I've, I've worked with children six, seven, eight, or nine, but two years old, uh, I wanted to prove that we could go to the mayor's office and perform something that they hadn't seen a kid perform. And uh, I think it's just all children who really helped me and inspired me that I can do something, especially in Gainesville, Florida. They, they really helped me. Uh, uh, they treat me like somebody. Now, you never told anyone for 20 years, you never told anyone you were at Central State. Why didn't you tell them? And why are you telling them now? Well, they wouldn't give me a job. And, uh, In other words, if you filled out an application and you just happened to mention that you were, in fact, a former Central State patient, that no one would want to hire you? Well, I figured they wouldn't want to hire me. Plus, they, the insurance companies wouldn't insure me insurance. And uh, I knew that they wouldn't let me work for the police department in Florida. It's like after going to juvenile center and boys school, I, uh, I know that if they knew about that, they wouldn't give me a job. And I wanted to work for children bad. So I, I chose Jacksonville. Then after I trained children there, I chose uh, Gainesville. And uh, I just never told them because I, I didn't have a young life. I had my first girlfriend when I was 21. Uh, Why? Well, I guess because they could see that something was wrong with me. Uh, I was really a scared person, so it's kind of funny that I ended up in boxing because uh, I didn't know how to fight, and uh, I was scared of people. And when they do things to me, I tried to hurt them. And uh, I didn't want to tell people that because they wouldn't let me work with children. And if I, I worked to the boys club here in Indianapolis years ago, I didn't ever told them uh, because they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't let me work there. But now that I've proven myself for 20 years, I think I get tired when I see uh, babies being abused, sexually abused. And uh, this is what made me come out with my story because I have the knowledge to help the children. And that's your reason for telling now. Yeah. The reason you kept it hid, as you mentioned just a few moments ago, was to keep this from folk who would try to stop you from proving yourself. So now that you've proven yourself, you really want to be a success to others who might be in a similar situation as yours, to let them know that if you should be diagnosed, as you were diagnosed, eight different areas of having serious problems that you can even go to Central State and you can really pull yourself up from that point and still be an achiever. And that's what you've been. Yeah, uh, I think I've been that. Uh, um, it's like I'm on a mission. I know uh, Jesus Christ has been so special to me. Uh, uh, I, need, uh, I need to exploit my program about child abuse uh, because uh, Adults are the ones that are doing it. Well, and I think my, my children, I call them my children because I never got to be a child. I just never had no young life at all. You had a sad childhood. Yes. Yeah. And it included physical abuse. It was all physical. It was, uh, I remember the days I was bleeding and my brother, he went in other directions. Why were you bleeding? from uh, extension cards. Uh, Who used them? My mother's boyfriend, my mother, and, and my older brother. 